everyone, Mitch here again with the 1925 Ford Model T. In this video, we're going to be pulling apart the old uh, wheel bearings off my Model T, and I'll show you how to put in some new ones. Because uh, my Model T's been uh, been a little bit wobbly lately. It's been uh, been sort of wandering all over the road a bit, and it's starting to worry me a bit. So, in this video, you'll see in detail how we uh, pull it apart, take the old wheel bearings out. And that was a bit of a fun job as well. Quite a bit of swearing there. Don't worry, you don't hear any swearing in this video. And I'll show you how to put in the new wheel bearings as well. So let's get cracking. All right, so the first step is to uh, remove the hubcap. So we'll go ahead and do that now. And I know this isn't strictly the right tool for the job. Okay, so once you've gone ahead and removed your uh, hubcap, just unscrew those. Uh, once you remove that, the next job is to remove this cotter pin here. And this one's seen better days by the look of it. And just squeeze up the legs on that one. And see if we can... There we go. Hopefully it'll come out without too much fuss. I might have to put a new one in too. There we go. Now it's got the cotter pin out. Okay, so now we've got the cotter pin out. The next step is to undo the locking nut here. Now, on the passenger side, or the right side of the car, this is actually left-hand thread. So we need to turn it clockwise to undo it. And uh, I realized that uh, appeared like it came loose quite easily. It's because I had to get on it with quite a big, heavy spanner to loosen it because somebody had over-tightened it. So, all right, so that's that nut off. Make sure that we don't lose that uh, castellated nut. We'll be in big trouble. And take the washer. And again, hang on to this. We'll give these a clean up as well. That's, as you can see, that's covered in grease and grime. So we'll clean that up before everything gets reassembled. <clears throat> All right, now we'll just get in there and clean out some of this excess grease. Obviously, we'll be putting fresh grease in it when we put everything back together, but for now we'll get that old grease out and then we'll take the next piece out which is also left hand thread there we go alright so that's the bearing nut removed and yeah it's looking pretty sad in there I reckon all right now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll jack the car up and we'll take the wheel off and then we'll be able to drive out the old bearings right. just lift that wheel off the ground and that wheel already feels extremely wobbly sorry if I'm blocking the view Right, that's the wheel off the ground. Now we can go ahead and we can pop that wheel right off. <clears throat> so, these tools. All right. One wheel. <clears throat> okay. Well, we'll give the axle a clean. And then we'll go ahead and we'll drive those old bearings out. So after much swearing, you can see the uh, the old ball bearings and the races and seals and things in the bottom of this box here. So yes, but the wheel had uh, had the original style uh, ball bearings in it. Um, so we got those out. And now, as you can see, I've gone ahead and I've very gently tapped in the new. Uh, new bearing races or cups, whatever you want to call them, uh, into the hub. So that's uh, that's the inner um, bearing cup that side. And I'll just give me a second to flip the wheel over and I'll show you the other one on the other side. <coughs> and as you can see, there's the outer bearing cup in place, ready to receive the bearings. Um, and now I will show you what type of bearings um, we'll be using this time. 
Okay, so as you can see here, what we've got here are tapered roller bearings. These ones are made by an American company called Timken. Um, these have been uh, highly recommended. So these are the ones we'll be using. Now you can see in the background there, I've already gone ahead and I've got one wheel uh, already got the bearings in, got it, got it nicely tightly packed with grease and got the, uh, the washer and the, uh, the locking nut back on. What we're going to do now is go and have a look back over on the other side of the car. I haven't done the other wheel yet. We'll do that one now. And I'll show you the mistake I made on this side and made myself look like a right idiot trying to put it back together. So let's go to the other side and have a look. Okay, so we're looking at the left-hand side wheel spindle here. Uh, front wheel spindle. This little piece of, uh, this little ring, this little collar on here, basically the, uh, the new bearings that we're putting on, <clears throat> Um, they don't thread onto, uh, they don't thread on like the old ones did. Um, actually, no, the old ones didn't either. They weren't even done properly. Never mind. But what this basically does, the bearing actually slides on, the outer bearing actually slides onto this collar here, and so the whole thing can spin freely. And you'll see down the side there, there's a little tiny grub screw goes in and locks into the keyway. Now that has to go on there about 0.9 of an inch, which I think is about 23 millimeters from memory. So from the end of the spindle there, to the forward uh, to the outer edge of this collar 0.9 inches or about 23 millimeters that's the distance that you need alrighty and then what happens is your uh, your bearings well, I'll show you how to fit those in a moment they go in um, you put your inner one in first then you put uh, put the wheel on put your outer one put your outer bearing in and Bob's your uncle alrighty now the bit that made me look like a right idiot this guy right here. I actually I can't believe I was uh, can't believe I didn't spot it. But hey, I'll it, it, quite easy, easy mistake to make. What we've got here, this section here between my fingers, is actually the innermost uh, bearing race um, uh, because it actually had ball bearings in it before. Obviously, now we're changing over to um, roller bearings. This inner bearing race, I forgot to take it off um, on the other side, and I tried to put the wheel on and wondered why there was only about a millimeter of thread sticking out to. Uh, to actually uh, do things up and I'm thinking well that's not going to work so after a bit of digging around and some um, and uh, a couple of embarrassing posts on uh, Facebook we actually found I found out the reason why the wheel wouldn't go on I've actually this bearing race so we'll go ahead now and we'll take that one off uh, and then we'll be able to continue putting this other wheel on okay so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take this uh, this uh, now redundant uh, inner bearing race off using inappropriate tools of course I couldn't find anything else to use so I'm going to use this old chisel now I know that's not really what you're supposed to use a chisel for but hey this one's been lying around collecting rust and that for a long time and let's face it I'm hopeless it would work so <clears throat> I'm sorry for those guys of you out there who are saying no not the chisel but hey it's for a good cause and these bearing races can be quite stubborn. I know the other one was. I'll tell you what, I'll come back to you guys when I've got this thing off. We'll be here all day. So, after uh, quite a bit of uh, hammering and a little bit of blasphemy, we actually finally got this old uh, inner bearing race off the spindle. So now we'll actually be able to get the wheel on, uh, but not before giving this uh, a good clean around here. So we'll do that next. Alright, so we'll go ahead and clean up this bit in here. Clean all the dirt out of there. much better. And now the new bearing will sit on there nice and neat. All right now as you can see I've got the, uh, the new inner bearing here which is the uh, as I said before it's uh, made by Timken um, available from Snyder's or modelt4.com any of those sorts of places. 
Um, so basically what we need to do first is go and pack as much grease as we can into these rollers, both sides, and jam it right in there and get the bearings nice and greased up nice and tight. And we could do that for both of them, the inner and the outer. Obviously that's already done on the other wheel. So we'll go ahead and grease this up now. I'll have to leave the camera recording because I ain't touching it with greasy fingers. Right, so now yet again we'll use a use a screwdriver, something like that to do this with. We get a generous helping of grease, smear it around the outside of the bearing, and the rest I do with my fingers. So we've got to make sure you work it in there nice and tight. Work it in around the back of the bearing, push it in, into the rollers. Some people call this therapeutic, I don't know. Alright, so that's that one done. We'll put a grease out of the way. Set that bearing down there for a moment. Get rid of this. <clears throat> and now, it's time to pop a bit of grease in the bearing race. I don't know if you can just about see it there. I'll lift the wheel up. So basically what we're going to Alright. <clears throat> okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to smear a generous helping of grease in around the bearing race here. And ultimately we'll be getting it down inside the hub as well. So plenty of grease in there. And then we'll be able to put the bearing in. So I'll just pop that back on the box here. <clears throat> All right, let's get some grease in there. Uh, there we go. Old screwdriver's always good for this sort of thing. Just put that bit of grease there. And now we'll work it in. Always good to have plenty of grease in these things. Okay, I'll have the wheel now. I have to clean it now. There we go. The rest of the grease will go inside the hub anyway. But as I say, it's important to have lots of grease in here because otherwise if you have dry bearings, well obviously they'll end up wearing out very quickly. So, put that packed grease in there. Now what we do is seat the bearing. There's the bearing there. Okay, so tapered face obviously goes down because that's the way that the bearing race is sitting in there. Yep, that turns freely. Okay, let's clean up this mess. And then we can put the dust cap in. Or the seal, sorry. We'll clean this wheel up properly once we've got this, uh, once we've got this done. Okay, let's grab the seal. <clears throat> so what we have here is a modern what we have here is a modern uh, modern neoprene seal. The original one was uh, a metal ring with a, with a felt seal on it. The modern ones are neoprene. And apparently the felt ones are quite difficult to get, get a hold of and even if you can, they're quite expensive. So I'm happy to settle with these ones. So what we need is a little bit of grease. Not that much. A little bit of grease just to put on the seal there so that we're not trying to shove it onto the spindle dry. Same as you do for an oil filter on a car. Just put a little bit of... Uh, Put a little bit of grease around the inside of the seal there, and then we're going to seat that in the hole like so. And then, an old trick that I've picked up, it's been around for ages, an old trick is to get like a socket like that, it's the same size or just a teensy bit smaller than the actual uh, hub so that it will sit onto your uh, seal there. And then we bring out a hammer. <clears throat> and then we gently, gently tap the seal in, making sure that it actually seals around the bearing. And that's all there is to it. And now, that wheel is almost ready to go on. What we need to do now, before we go any further, is pack some grease inside there.
inside the actual hub itself and that needs to be pretty well full up with grease it's a messy job and I think I'm going to need something a bit better than that to do it with <clears throat> just bear with me a second okay so you'll remember that uh, trusty chisel that's been used for everything but wood carving that makes an excellent spatula look at that there we go and we just scoop that in there and scrape it off inside the hub lots of grease fill the hub up so that everything is well lubricated Obviously we don't want it oozing out the other end, so we'll just double check that. That's good. Still needs more in it yet though, there's quite a big space inside that, uh, inside that hub. There's more. Alright. Now, before we can put any more grease in, we do need to put the wheel on the car, and then an old trick that I was taught uh, was to actually literally get the grease in the palm of your hand and literally force it in there once the once the wheel's on. Alright, so we'll go ahead now and we'll mount this wheel and then we'll put the inner bearing on and then we'll start to put everything together. Okay, so now we're going to mount the wheel. Just need to grab the jack from the other side. And lift the car up a little bit because it's a little bit too low to put the wheel on. Carefully mount the wheel. There we go. And of course, it's pushed out most of the grease that I put in. <coughs> yeah, in there we go. Work that in. Okay, so now we've got the wheel on. I'm just going to steal some of this grease here, and we've got to grease up the inner bearing. Now obviously that grease cup there is already already uh, full of grease, so it doesn't need any more in it. But we will steal some of that grease to put in the bearing. And like like the uh, inner bearing, you've also got to make sure that you push this grease deep into the bearing. As you can see there, there's absolutely nothing inside it, so we need to press the grease into the rollers very firmly to make sure that they're nice and tightly packed. Okay, now as you can see at the moment, the bearing's actually sitting up, sitting proud there, it's sticking out a bit. What we need to do is push the wheel on square, and then the bearing actually has to sit on that sleeve on the axle which I showed you when I was putting it on. So it's just a little bit of a jiggle, and that should go on quite nicely. Okay, so as you can see, I've got the bearing started. I'll just turn the wheel so that you can see it there. You can see that there's a little bit of thread sticking out here. That's just enough to, uh, to start to push the um, inner bearing on, uh, onto the spindle. So I'll show you what I mean by that. <clears throat> just to degrease my hands again. I'm going to get grease all over the camera. All right, so having a look behind, uh, you can actually see that the uh, the bearing uh, there's actually a gap between the bearing and the back of the spindle there. So what we're aiming to do is close that up. All right. Now the easiest way to do that, easiest way to do that is simply to put the nut on here and do it up. And as you do that, the act of that will push 
the bearings all the way home. <clears throat> all right, so here we have here we have the castellated nut that normally holds everything in place. We'll go ahead and we'll put that on. Keep in mind we've got to take it off again so that we can put the washer on. All right, so now we'll start to just slowly, there's no rush with this, do that up. And I'll see if I can show you what's happening behind the wheel as well while I just turn that. If you have a look here, just forgive my camera work. And you'll see that gap closing up. So. Okay, so now that we've got that gap closed up, and I'll just make sure it is. Yep, now that gap's nicely closed up. What we do now is we now take this nut off. Pull that nut all the way off. And get rid of that excess grease. <coughs> and you can see, I'll just turn the wheel. You can see the all the thread sticking out now that we've got we've got it as far home as it needs to be. Next step is to put the Locking wash is to put the locking washer into place. Now there's a, there's a notch, a notch on the washer, which actually lines up with the keyway on the axle here. So we push that onto there, like so. And then we can put the castellated nut back on and put the cotter pin through. So we'll bring the nut back in. We'll do that up. Clean all that excess grease off of it. And now we'll do it up. Now the trick is to do it up tight enough that it holds everything in place, but also such that the wheel needs to be able to spin freely. If you do it up too tight, you'll lock, you'll lock the bearings up and they won't work properly. Seems to be working beautifully. Make sure that grease stays in there. And then, once we're satisfied that we've got it to the right tightness, we need to put the cotter pin back through the top. <clears throat> this cotter pin's seen better days. I should probably put a new one in. Uh, oh, the hole doesn't quite line up yet. Hang on a second. We've got that a fraction too tight actually. That looks a bit better. And where's the hole? There it is. Let's use the appropriate tool, shall we? Well, oh, that seems to be a bit out of alignment with the hole at the bottom, so we'll just I'll just adjust it a bit so that we can get the cotter pin through. and now I'll be able to open the legs on the cotter pin. Okay, so now we'll just bend the cotter pin legs around. And there we are. Now to do your front wheel bearings on your Model T in one simple lesson. And I think I'll go and get a clean rag and we'll put the hubcap back on and then we'll degrease the wheel and clean it up. Uh, that spins beautifully and perfect. It doesn't even wobble. How about that? All right, I'm going to go and clean my hands. We'll put the hubcap on, clean it up, and then we'll have a brief summary at the end. All right, so as you can see, I've got the uh, hubcaps back on. So I've got the cotter pins in. Everything is nice and tight and greased up. She's good for the road. 
Well, that's it for another video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And don't forget, if you liked it, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and that little notification bell so you get told when I put up another video. Alrighty, well, that's it from me. And um, yeah, as, as before, thank you very much for watching, guys. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't uh, continue to do this without your support. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.